Hi everyone, welcome back. My name is Andrea. I am the Knitting PT and this is my channel where I talk about all things yarn related, knitting, and wellness. Um, on Instagram, you can find me there at the Knitting PT. I post maker self-care reels every other Friday. Uh, right now there are over, I think it's like 70 reels on there and they're all sorted on my highlights by body part. So hopefully it's easy to find. Um, and I also have a website, www.ptandrea.com, where you can now book virtual consults with me to either look at the ergonomics or posture of your making, whether you're knitting, crocheting, throwing pottery, making jewelry, whatever it is that you do, or sewing, um, the 30-minute consults um, where I will give you individualized tips and advice on how to optimize your posture. I also have virtual personal training available as well, and that is all on my website. And uh, that is the new stuff I have going on. I launched this uh, service a little less than a week ago. Um, the response so far has been amazing. So thank you so much to everyone who has supported and who has shared. Um, continue to get the word out. I'm really excited about offering this service to all my fellow makers and crafters. Um, yeah, but I'm really excited about it. So please check it out if you like. Um, otherwise, links to everything I talk about is in the description box below. Um, makers, designers, dyers, as well as all the links to my Instagram, Ravelry, Patreon, Ko-Fi, and my website. Um, I think that's it. Uh, so let's get into it because I am a little hot right now and I would I want to talk about this FO and then take it off. Um, so this is one of my FOs. I have two to show you this week. And this is the Jones cardigan. It is for my dad. He requested a cabled cardigan with a shawl collar. This is the pattern we decided on. Oops, the button came undone. I have finally finished it. I cast this on, I think in March, and I have been steadily working on it, really ramped up working on it the past three weeks because my parents are now here visiting um, from Taiwan where they live right now. And so I wanted to have this finished uh, by the time they came so that my dad can take it back with him. But this is in Madeline Tosh, DK stove pipe is the colorway. I'm gonna stand so you can see the whole thing. It is a gigantic cardigan. I think it's the 40 inch, 40 inch? I think it's the 40 inch um, chest circumference size. Um, and yeah, like as you can see, as I'm wearing it, it's very oversized because it's not my size. But it is so cozy. That shawl color is beautiful. And these buttons are from La Mercerie. I bought them online. They're a perfect match. You can see there are cable panels, moss panel, moss stitch panels, and the cable goes down the sleeve as well. All right, I'm going to take it off because I'm sweating now. All right. I literally just put on the buttons this morning. Whew, all right. But yeah, you can look at this. Um, so this took me seven, about just under seven skeins of DK weight yarn. So it is a huge project. The sleeves each took like a skein of yarn alone and so did the shawl collar. You can see here the shawl collar. It was, it's done by short rows so that the collar part is the widest, tallest part compared to the rest of the button band because you knit the whole thing around. But then you work short rows so that this part that folds over on your neck, the collar is nice and squishy and warm and thick, but just take a lot of yarn. And you all know me by now, I am not a fan of ribbing, so this is truly, truly a labor of love and effort. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to have it done. Um, it's really beautiful. I blocked it yesterday and le basically left a fan pointing at it for the entire day to dry it because I wanted to show it off here on the podcast before I give it to my dad later this week. Yeah, but it's beautiful. I did not alternate skeins for this project at all. Um, I think the idea of alternating skeins while doing cable and mustache was just too much for my brain to comprehend, but it did knit up quite evenly. And the yarn itself has a slight um, tonal quality to it, semi-tonal quality to it anyway, so you can kind of see Kind of goes in now, but you can't really tell like where I started a new skein versus the old one because it's just kind of it was fairly even throughout. Um, yeah, and I do find Madeline Tosh can be fairly um, even with their um, with their dyes with their colorways, um, but you know when in doubt do alternate. Especially, I think when you're making something with a texture, it does hide any sort of variations within skeins a little bit more than if you're doing just like straight stockinette. 
yeah, so that is my first FO. It is a huge one. I am really relieved to have it off the needles. Um, yeah, really relieved. I'm gonna put this down. My second FO is a test knit for Amy Schur and is the coloring book T. So it is a fingering weight version of her coloring book Raglan, which came out earlier this year. And take a look at that detail up close. So I did view A, and view A is written so that you do the body in the main color, and the contrast is just little stripes of color at the ribbing, at the hem, and at the collar. View B is the one with the stripes on the body and the stripes on the longer sleeves. Um, and I really love how this one turned out. I am making view B for my coloring book Raglan, which is the DK worsted weight version. I'm st I haven't touched it in weeks. Um, I'll get to it eventually once I'm done with all my test knits. But um, I'm really excited that I decided to view A for this test knit because then I have one of each. And also I just really love um, how the yarns I picked uh, play together. So the main color, if you remember, is Amakusa from Totla Mata Yarns. And this is a 50-50 Merino cotton blend. And then the CC is from Explorer Knits. This is Dreamscape and this was from her Solstice. Um, calendar this past year. You can see it is a variegated yarn so you can see the color changes throughout which I thought was really neat. It was, I really love that touch and how it came out on this on this make. Yeah. But yeah um, I also did not alternate skeins on this one either and it knit up beautifully. Yeah. So this pattern is coming out, I think, end of July, around there. So we'll look out for it in a few weeks. And those are my FOs. Oh, what I'm wearing. I always forget to say what I'm wearing. What I'm wearing, this is the Onward and Up tee from Tiff Nealon. This was just released, I think, a week ago. Um, I showed it off in the last podcast, but I wasn't wearing it. So this is how it looks on me. I knit the cropped version, which is just perfectly cropped for me. Like, my navel is right around here. Um, so yeah, it's the perfect length. And again, MC is Camellia Fiber Company in clay, and the CC is Madeline Tosh Modern Fair Isle. Yeah, so if you haven't gotten your hands on this tee yet, definitely do. I recommend it. It works up super fast. Because um, I think like I use size 6 needles, I think, on the main body. Um, but yeah, it's it works up super fast. It's a really fun summer tee. Um, yeah. Highly recommend it. Um, all right. Oh, all right. I'm gonna calm down for a bit. I think when I'm sweaty, I get a little like frantic almost. Let's drink some water. All right. Okay. On to whips. So I haven't touched my whips too much because I was working so much on the cardigan for my dad, trying to get that finished. But I do have some progress to show you. So first one, this is the Brooklyn Raglan by Tori Knits. And I am working on the Raglan increases right now. There's not much to show you, honestly, but I didn't want to show the yarn. So this is the Tweed DK Base from Woolberry. And this colorway is Sunset Highway. This beautiful golden color. Yeah. Yeah, it's so beautiful. Um, I can't wait to have more of this done. It's really just like a blob right now. Yeah. Yeah, give you another look at that. The stitch markers I'm using are from Hello Lavender. They're a combination of her stitch markers. So this is like from Mush Club. And I have several other like little accent stitch markers that are from, I think these were from, these are from other sets of hers. Yeah, I don't remember which ones exactly now. Yeah, and oh wait, I'm sorry, that's not Sunset Highway. That, my camera's having a moment today. Anyway, the colorway is Golden Sunset. And this is what it looks like skeined up. Yeah. All right. My other whip is the one that I cannot tell you what it is called because I'm still not sure if I'm allowed to share it. I did. I've made a little bit of progress. It's still kind of hard to show you all what it looks like. I guess I do have a little bit more progress. Um, so this is a test knit. I'm not sure if it's a secret. I'm not sure if I can say what it is, so I will not, but once I can, I will share. Um, here it is so far. So it is a oversized T. 
tee pullover? I don't know, it's not a tee, it has sleeves. Um, but it calls for using fingering slash sport and um, mohair. I am using Ching Fibers Veronita, which is their lace weight cashmere yarn because I can't do mohair or surrey. So this is a colorway atmosphere from Ching Fiber and then my main color up here is from Through the Wardrobe Yarn Co. and this is, um, what is it? It's Looking for Frost, something like that. It's something to do with Frost and I will pop the name up here. Here's what it looks like up close. I really love my yarn combination here. Just the light speckling and variegation in the main color matches this atmosphere so perfectly. Yeah. Um, I'm really excited to keep working on it. Uh, what I'm finding is I am struggling a little bit with the lace sections with using the Veronita. Um, it's probably similar to using mohair because it is thin, it is fluffy. Um, but yeah, it is a little tricky to do lace on such lightweight yarn. Um, so I am having to go a little slower than I am used to, which is okay. Um, and I'm having to concentrate more too. Um, so yeah, so it's a little bit slower going than I thought it would be. Um, but I'm hopeful to make a lot of progress on it as well. Um, yeah. And the stitch marker I'm using for this one is from Denim and Rain. It's this beautiful resin one with some purpley leaves and stuff inside. Yeah. And I think that is it for what I have to show for whips. I really haven't worked on anything else much. Um, I have two other test knits. One of them I'm still waiting for the yarn for. The other one I have not even cast on. So I've got nothing to show for that. Um, yeah. But let's move on to acquisitions because I do have more acquisitions to talk about today. And before I dive into that, I did want to speak a little bit more to that as well. There was a discussion on the Instagram community a couple weeks ago about um, the use of terms like, you know, knitting addict, um, yarn porn, just like hashtags and phrases that might be damaging to someone who is struggling with those things. Um, I think the particular hashtags were brought up were like knitting addict, knitting is my therapy, um, just things that have to deal with addiction and therapy and um, yeah, that kind of thing. So I am going for not going to use those hashtags anymore. I was very guilty of using particularly the ones um, knitting addict, yarn porn. Um, those were the main ones I tended to use and so I'm moving away from using those. And part of that is because I do want to be sensitive to people who are struggling with those kinds of things. Um, if there's anything I can do to minimize the amount of harm I, the amount of harm I put out into the community, that is what I will do. Um, that is what I believe in. Um, it doesn't matter. That it doesn't impact me personally. If it impacts someone else, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to create any sort of harm or any sort of negative negativity out there. So that's my stance on it. And so with that, I did want to address this portion of my podcast. Um, my intent with sharing my acquisitions is not to like feed into any sort of capitalist frenzy or to create any sort of feeling of, you know, keeping up with the Joneses kind of thing. Um, my intent in sharing the yarns I buy or the knitting accessories I buy is to really share my joy for these items with you and to highlight, you know, other small businesses out there and other makers and creators and to really give them a place to shine um, and for people to discover them and support them as well. Um, so I hope that's what comes across here. Um, I certainly don't want to make someone feel like, oh, like I must buy indie dyed yarn or I must buy you know, these kinds of stitch markers or something like that to be, to feel validated, to be in the community. And that's not it at all. Um, this is just what I choose to buy. Like I am not someone who spends a lot of money. Um, I don't really buy clothes very much and I don't really buy books much these days. I tend to just borrow them from the library. And so kind of yarn related things are just the only things I spend money on besides, you know, the essentials like food and stuff like that. Um, and so this is kind of my, this is what brings me joy. 
basically. And I am trying to, you know, not lean into it too much because I am recognizing that my yarn stash is growing quite big. Um, but at the same time, I really love supporting these other small businesses and supporting people who are making a living off of making their art and making and doing their creative thing. Um, yeah, I just really admire people who take that risk to do that and I want to help them out. And so anyway, that's my spiel. I'm not on any sort of soapbox or trying to tell you what to do or what not to do. I'm just kind of laying bare what I'm doing and why I'm doing it and my, my thoughts and feelings behind it. And yeah, no, that's it. <laughs> um, but with that in mind, I am going to try to be more intentional in the way I say things too. Um, yeah. All right. So moving on to acquisitions. I did get a project bag and this one is from Knitting Nelly, or I think her shop name is Shop Knitting Nelly, Morgan. And I have been wanting one of her bags for so long. Um, and I finally got one. I happened to be on Instagram when she posted saying that she had like a few project bags up for sale and I immediately went and bought it and I'm so glad I did. I have tried to get her bags before, but it is it can be kind of hard to get her bags because, you know, for especially for I think project bag makers, you know, a lot of time goes into making project bags, especially patchwork ones. And so it's not like they have a huge volume of them just available for purchase. Um, and I recognize that. And so I am just counting myself super lucky to have gotten one. So here it is. It is so beautiful. I love the log cabin patchwork here. This is the back with her tag here. And it is a quilted bag. So the inside is lined. It's just canvas inner, but yeah, super love it. So yeah, again, this is from Knitting Nelly. And then I was inspired by Aro of Aro Knits and Pearls. Um, if you saw, she recently knit up a Georges tank in Knitting for Olive, pure silk, and I was inspired to get some myself. Now when I got it, it was also because I was buying the buttons for my dad's cardigan and I decided to just kind of throw some yarn in the cart. So I only got two of these and I'm thinking I probably need more. <laughs> um, so we'll see, when I get around to figure out what I'm, well, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm making a tank of some sort. So when I get to figure out the yardage, I probably need to buy some more. Hopefully they will be more of the same color. If not, I will just wait. But this is Knitting for Olive Pure Silk. And this is the colorway dark cognac. I never know how to say that word. Dark cognac. So it is a brown. On the website, I thought it was more of a golden brown, but it is pretty brown, but I'm okay with that. Yeah, so I got two skeins and each skein is like, I think only 50 grams weight. Yeah, 50 gram weight. Um, so we'll see, I probably will need more, but yeah, we'll see. But yeah, I feel like this fall I'm going to be leaning a lot into like earthy, earthy tones, um, earthy warmer tones. So yeah, I'm kind of excited for that. That's the thing I love about making my own clothes is I can really um, make silhouettes that fit me well and that I like and feel comfortable in and also make them in colors that bring me a lot of joy. Um, so I think like my ultimate goal, I think is to really not have to buy any ready to wear clothes except for like bottoms, um, and like skirts and dresses. Cause I'm not really at a point where I want to sew my own clothes yet. Um, but I think I want to be able to stop buying tops of any sort because I'll be making all of my own. Yeah. Okay. And then I also got my Anne of Green Gables club from Woolberry. Okay, are you ready? I was so stunned by these colors when I opened it. So first, this is Kindred Spirit. And again, all my Woolberry is on DK base for the Anne of Green Gables Club. So this beautiful rusty orange red. I really like it. I'm not really someone who's really into reds and oranges, but Woolberry's reds, oranges for this Anne of Green Gables Club have been kind of blowing me away and I might be getting into them soon. And then the other one, this one is a showstopper. This is Marilla's brooch. 
this beautiful lilac lavender variegated with speckles throughout. I love it. I was freaking out when I opened up this one. And if you remember, Marilla has a brooch that was passed down to her from, I think, her mom. And I think it's the amethyst brooch, which is why this is purple. And Anne was playing with it. It got lost. Marilla thought that she stole it. And she, anyway, it was a big thing. And it's a, a story that I remember a lot from there. So it's colorway is also extra special. So yeah, I've been really loving the Anne of Green Gables Club so far. Um, I've only gotten, you know, one skein of each colorway on DK. Um, so I don't really know what I'll be doing with them. I think eventually maybe some sort of <laughs> striped sweater of some sort or cardigan. Um, but there are certain colorways where I'm like pinpointing, like if Bethany releases these colorways for pre-order, I definitely want sweater quantities of some of these. Like for this one, for sure, a sweater quantity. Yeah. And then, so... La Mercerie also got the full skein version of Explore Knits Solstice box, Solstice calendar from last year, and she got all 20 colorways on full skeins. So I got some. I spent a night where I went through all my Explore Knits minis and basically figured out which ones I wanted on full skeins, and I was very good, very restrained. Um, so first I got Sea Breeze, which I'm sure that is not a surprise to any of you. It's this beautiful kind of dusty light blue with variegated pinks and light oranges and cream throughout. Absolutely beautiful. And then I got a skein each of Desert Bloom. And Morning Glow. And for the sea breeze, I have planned to make like a knit tea out of it. And with the Desert Bloom and Morning Glow, I want to make tanks out of each of these. Um, yeah. Super excited. All right. And then the last big thing I have to show you is my Downton collection box from Woolberry. So I kept it all in its original box and the original packaging to show to you all. I'm going to have to move all these things. I think I might knock things over. But one thing I found hilarious was, I'm going to try to cover addresses here, that when it came, you see that sticker over there? That's like, it says EWR. So um, I'm pretty sure that this went through the airport. And I'm wondering, like, was my box that big that they had to send it on an airplane? Because I've never gotten that, like, that airport sticker thing on any of my yarn purchases before, like, ever. Um, so anyway, that was kind of hilarious to me. So I'm gonna open the box and here it is. I obviously reopen it and I am a monster when it comes to opening packages. So I already tore the wrapping paper over, but you can see the beautiful tissue paper that they have with their logo on it. Let me open it up. You can see all the yarn. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna put this down and I'm gonna take things out one by one to show you all. So first I'm gonna show the added stuff I got. So I got a bottle of their wool wash and this is the Orange Grove scent. Come on, okay. The bottle's a little dented. I think just from the pressure. Like you know how when things go on airplanes the pressure does weird things to bottles? <laughs> I think that's what happened. <laughs> and I also got their all natural balm. And it's, I got the unscented one because if you remember, I'm very sensitive to smell. I'll open it up to show you what it looks like. It is unscented. Yeah. And then I also got some scissors. Look how beautiful these are. I'm going to put it on the bag so. You can see that detailing on there. Very like, when was Downton Abbey? Like the 20s, very 20s. They're super sharp. Yeah, can you hear that? I don't know why. I love the sound of like scissors snipping, especially when they're like nice and sharp. Yeah. So these were the extras I got with it. And now for the yarn. Uh, So first I got 
This is I'd Like a Life, and this is the colorway based off of Edith. And it's this beautiful pink, dusty. I use the word dusty a lot, don't I? This beautiful light pink with some golden variegation throughout. I got this on the sport base. And I do have plans for all these. I cannot remember where they are right now. I have them written down somewhere. So I got three skeins. And I also got three skeins of Haven't You Heard, which is the colorway based on Mary, I believe. And this is on the Merino, Berry Merino base. So this is fingering weight. You see this beautiful, deep, Teal with some dark speckles. Yeah. So pretty. I think this is one um, similar to Nightfall from Explore Knits where on camera and on still photos it looks more blue than it is in real life. Because I'm even just looking right now at my camera image coming back at me and it looks so much bluer on the camera image than it does when I'm holding it. Like as I'm holding it now it leans more of a green teal than a blue teal. Um, yeah just something to note like some of these colorways that these divers make are so hard to photograph so well and I feel that because whenever I'm editing my podcast or whenever I'm taking my pictures I try really hard to edit so that they're color accurate. And there are definitely some colorways where I have really struggled with getting the color accurate. Um, so all you dyers out there, I feel your struggle. Um, yeah. And that's probably also why my Instagram feed looks a little more chaotic and not streamlined. Like there are some people who like have such a beautiful grid when you look at their Instagram profile because they use the same filters on everything or they edit the same way. Um, I'm not like that. Like it is very important to me to portray things accurately color wise um and so that's why my feed is kind of probably looks like it's kind of all over the place i try to take all my photos in natural light but you know that can also vary from day to day and so yeah that's why things look a little more chaotic on mine and then i got i like to call it the men <laughs> i got a bunch of i think i got all but one of the men on the sport weight base and these I do remember my plans these are to make an ame cardigan from Hohi Locatelli um, it's a striped cardigan um, and so I cannot hold these all at once I think but I will show them to you one by one and then attempt to hold them all together so this first one is called I'm political and this is based off of Tom this beautiful olive green come on And this one is Travel and Hope. And I think this one is based off of Bates. Yes, the name makes sense. Yeah, this dark charcoal. This one is called The Weekend, which is Matthew. Based on the line where he talks about having the weekend and then the Dowager Countess has no idea what a weekend is. This beautiful brown gray. And then I have My Life's Work, and this is based on Robert. And it's this lighter green, variegated green with some rusty speckles in there. And then lastly, but not least, this is for Good and Proper, and this is based on Carson. And it's a beautiful brown. And so these together... All right, here we go. We're going to make... I'm going to make a striped cardigan with. I really wanted an earthy kind of cardigan, so I think this will be perfect. And I kind of love that it's all, that it's the five men from Downton Abbey. There might be a six man that I do not have any. One, two, three, four, five. I think there's a six one. I don't remember who it is now, and clearly their colorway did not fit into my plan, so I did not get that one. But yeah, I kind of love it. Yeah. So, that is my Downton Abbey box. Um, yeah, it was quite a treat to open, for sure. So for my wellness tip for this episode, I wanted to talk a little bit about how to knit with less tension. 
and that and by that I mean tension in your body. I had someone who asked me that recently on my Instagram asking about how they can knit with less stress and tension in their body. Um, and so I thought I figured I'd probably share with you all here too. Um, so what I said was to first of all take um, take a lot of breaks. Like really set your work down on your lap, really let go of everything to give your hands and your body a break from holding that posture of holding your crafting in your hand for the whole time. And I would say probably take a break like every 30 minutes where you actually put your work down and let go of it. And like maybe, you know, move your hands around, do a stretch or two, that kind of thing. Um, that is to break up the, the posture and pattern of sitting and holding something for a prolonged amount of time so that your muscles don't get too stiff and so that your fascia doesn't get um, stiff as well. The other thing is to also just breathe. Um, especially if you're working on a project that may feel stressful to you, maybe you're doing a new technique, maybe you are doing something where you really have to pay a lot of attention, a lot of times we can kind of stop breathing without realizing it. And so I would encourage you to like, you know, take a deep breath, take a deep breath in and then release it out. And really when you take that deep breath in, try to fill up your lungs and expand your rib cage as well as fill up your stomach, which I know is asking a lot. So think about breathing in. Really expand your ribcage. Breathe in, really think about pulling that air down into the bottom of your lungs, expanding your belly too. And then as you breathe out, just imagine that you're blowing all your stress and your tension out. And that will help just instantly relax your body too. The other thing is to just knit slower or, you know, make a little slower. A lot of times um, I feel like we feel like we have to be productive with what we're making and i fall into this category too like you know i may i am more driven by the product of my making rather than the process and so sometimes especially this week when i was rushing to get my dad's cardigan done i was really just like trying to work super hard trying to knit super fast which can result in a lot of tension in your body because you're you're gripping things tighter when you're tense and you're trying to focus and so one thing you can do is to just try to relax and try to go slower just intentionally you know as you make each stitch just intentionally just go slower don't worry about how fast you're going or how many stitches you're making a minute just focus in on the here and now and focus in on what's in your hands and what your hands are doing as you're making it and that will help you to slow down that will help your body to relax in turn and result in less stress and, t stress and tension in your body too um, so yeah, that, that is my tip for you for how to make with less tension and stress. Um, yeah, it's just, just breathe, take breaks, go slow. Um, and yeah, that's all I've got for you this week. Um, it'll probably be a few more weeks until I'm back because I'll be taking some time off to spend with my family uh, while they're here visiting. Um, super glad though that I got to share the cardigan with you. I was thinking that I might not even finish the cardigan in time in order to film before giving it to my dad. Um, but I'm really glad that I did because you all have been watching me make this cardigan for the past several months. So I'm really happy that I get to share the end product with you all too. Um, thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking around. As always, all links are below. Um, and I hope that you are all enjoying your summer and I will see you in a few weeks. Happy knitting.